Secretary of Defense and Urban Development, the Minister of External Affairs, and distinguished guests. 1975 July, a very popular mayor of Jaffna was gunned down. A Tamil mayor of Jaffna was gunned down by three or four Tamil boys, one of whom was LTT's infamous leader, Velupulai Prabhakaran. Since then, we have had 39 years of suffering. All communities of this country, whether they are Tamils, Sinhalese, Muslims, Burgers, Buddhists, Hindus, Christians, or Muslims, they've all suffered. Today, we are talking of reconciliation and challenges that are facing reconciliation. Now, challenges are many. When I speak to the members of the diplomatic community, they ask, why isn't this government providing a solution to the Tamil problem? And they carry on. They speak. And uh, I always thought, when they ask such question, are they equating Tamil problem to the northern problem? Are they equating TNA equals Tamils? Because invariably, wherever one travels, there are a lot of misconception. Misconception about the Tamils. Why do I say that? There are 3.2 million Tamils in Sri Lanka. Ladies and gentlemen, only 900,000 of whom live in the northern province. So when they talk of Tamil problem, if you find a solution to the northern province and the whatever concerns that may be there, you are de dealing with the problems of northern province, not of the Tamil community as a whole. When people talk about providing devolution of powers to the northern province, they think that they are solving the Tamil problem. But just imagine you're talking about 900,000 people out of 3.2 million. When, we, when you speak of LTT equals Tamils, or today, the Tamil National Alliance equals of Tamils, ladies and gentlemen, the national parties, the Sri Lanka Freedom Party and the United National Party, gains more support of the 3.2 million Tamils than the Tamil National Alliance. Because, ladies and gentlemen, Tamil National Alliance is a regional political party concentrated in the northern and eastern provinces. So these are important matters. Why? Because the international community is still unaware of the complexities involved. Ladies and gentlemen, when I travel far and wide, when I travel to different countries, there is a lot of lack of understanding. It may be as a consequence of years of propaganda by the LTTE, or it may be that lack of resources on the part of government to deal with these problems and misinformation. However, we are, we are dealing with all these different perception in, around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, I will talk about challenges. There are many challenges. Some would say we need to know the truth in order to find reconciliation. Truth about what? Are we talking about the last stages of the war? And are we talking about that in Sri Lanka, the victims were only from the last one week? Are we ignoring the 1975, the first bullet, and every bullet thereafter, every month, every year, for the last 39 years, out of only four years now, we have lived without a bullet being fired. But the 35 years, those 39 years, people have gone through suffering. Ladies and gentlemen, what are the complexities are we talking about? Let me take you back to the 1980s, when the Tamil community in the northern and eastern provinces were cheering for when, the, when India were training our youth, they were cheering India. They thought India will arm our youth, train them, and get them to fight the Sri Lankan forces. That was the reality in the 80s. The same people who were cheering in 1987, when the Indo-Lanka Accord was signed, they hoped and prayed 
that India would disarm the Tamil militants. Remember, it wasn't just LTT. There was LTT, there was Eros, there was EPRLF, there was Telo, there was Plot, and so on. But what did they experience? Ladies and gentlemen, when the Indian armed forces, Indian peacekeeping forces were withdrawing, they overlooked, they saw, they ignored a group of Tamil militants conscripting 13-year-olds, 14-year-olds, 15-year-olds. They were armed by the Indian forces, and those innocent youth died in the hands of LTTE when they went on an orgy of violence in 1989-90. I was a witness to that. So, the same people who once cheered, they hoped that Indians would do as they, as part of their agreement in the Indo Lanka Accord, that they will disarm the Tamil militants. Yes, they failed to disarm the LTT, we know that. But also, one cannot forget, they armed other Tamil militant groups. And that was a sheer disappointment to this community. And Tamil community from there on were well aware that international mediations, international interference will always end up being sour to that community because they first had experienced that. Today, we are talking of international intervention, an independent international inquiry in the last stages of the war. Ladies and gentlemen, the last, as I said earlier, as I mentioned earlier, last stages of, of the war weren't the only war. They weren't only victims of Sri Lanka's 30-year uh, history. Complexities are there. Why today you take our district, my district of Batiklo, we have more than 12,000 former militants who are living there. Why do I call them uh, militants rather than calling LTTs? because there are other militant groups too, armed and trained by India in the 80s who are now living once they were fighting each other. And these militants are not the only ones. There were more than 40,000 victims who suffered in the hands of these various militant groups. Today, ladies and gentlemen, how would they feel if there should be an inquiry on their conduct previously. Ladies and gentlemen, 90,000 families live in Batiklo, Tamil families, of which nearly 12,000 have former militants as they are members of those families. There are as many as 30,000 victims, at least, who are currently, who were members of these 90,000 families. So once you start to open these cans of worms, ladies and gentlemen, Batiklo's peace, first time in the last three years, will be shattered. And that is not my view. That is the view of many, many former militants that I speak to. And it doesn't stop there. It doesn't stop there. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, reconciliation is going on, no doubt. But challenges are there, too. What are the challenges? Many challenges. There's a group of, a section of Tamil community who feel that somehow the international community will provide them the answer to their long cherished dream, separation of Northern and Eastern Sri Lanka. Now, however, they feel that if not the Eastern Sri Lanka, at least Northern Sri Lanka. Ladies and gentlemen, it is the responsibility of all concerned to understand that concerns of Tamil community is not restricted to the concerns of one province, people who are living there. Ladies and gentlemen, you cannot jeopardize, one cannot jeopardize the lives of 2.3 million Tamils because you want to find a solution to the aspirations of 900,000. And I'm not even talking about how many of them have the same aspirations, but I'm talking in the, on the basis of the differences that, that you have. Ladies and gentlemen, it is important today, the challenges that Sri Lanka will face, 
We traveled recently to South Africa. We looked at the truth and reconciliation model there. We are, we are studying various f models of reconciliation, but Sri Lanka has to evolve its own model. We cannot, because our own experiences, ladies and gentlemen, is unique. Like every country has its unique experiences. And ladies and gentlemen, you cannot find solutions to 36 years in three months. It takes time. And ladies and gentlemen, you cannot be selective when it comes to justice. It needs to be holistic. You have to look at the experiences as a whole. And ladies and gentlemen, many perpetrators. I will just give you a simple example to you. We were going through these uh, slides, and there was a picture that just struck me. Uh, as a Tamil in living in London, uh, I remember the same pictures were available quite widely on the LTT propaganda uh, pages. Uh, it was, it gave an award to one of its former members who led that operation, who is currently living in Germany as a German citizen. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you really want to find truth, you may also have to look at the cities of cities such as London, Toronto, Berlin, because you also have many, many victims, as well as hell of a many perpetrators living in those cities, too. Ladies and gentlemen, you cannot ignore all these complexities and just simplify it as solution to Sri Lanka's problems could be found within just one week of uh, war. And uh, you will find that you're going to open up a new challenges that, uh, that will leave Sri Lanka uh, sinking in the depth of those waters. So in conclusion, what I would like to say is that Sri Lanka's future is bright as long as Sri Lanka can course its own uh, history. It can, it can start to work at its problems. And the international community can certainly be invaluable source of help. But uh, the skepticism is there. It can be very fair when we study our 30 odd years of international interferences. Thank you.